in the 1920s, physicist Prince Louis de Broglie proposed something revolutionary. Since light waves have a particle behavior, he thought, as shown by Einstein in the photoelectric effect, then particles should have a wave behavior as well, right? That's what he argued. And it turns out it does. The electron is wave. And he found the wavelength of matter waves, right? That's the de Broglie wavelength. And that's equals to Planck's constant over the mass of the particle times the velocity of the moving particle. That's the momentum, really. So it's Planck's constant over the momentum of the particle. So this means all forms of matter have wave-like properties, right? All forms of matter have wave-like properties. So this means that every object has a wavelength. So that means even you have a wavelength. But for objects like baseballs, the wavelength is so small, it's impossible to detect. For electrons, it's measurable. And experiments like electron diffraction proved de Broglie right. Matter is waves. All forms of matter are waves. So when electrons pass through a double slit, they act like waves. They're spreading out and interfering to create patterns. What we call particles are simply localized interactions of waves with the detector. Okay, so it's just waves interacting with waves on the detector. And so in this way, we could actually make a physical process for telepathy, right? There's an actual medium that we can communicate with our brains. If you're made of waves, if I'm made of waves, and my brain creates waves, right? We know the brain creates waves. We have brain wave frequencies that correspond to our actual conscious states, then that gives a mechanism now where we could actually communicate telepathically, somehow interact with each other on wave-on-wave -on -wave interactions.